This LCS offseason has featured bombshell after bombshell of epic breaking news, and recently Travis Gafford of Travis Gafford Industries brought the offseason to its peak with the report that Summit, most recently the top laner for Live Sandbox in the LCK, is going to be joining Cloud9. Get it? Peak? Summit? This move carries additional aftershocks since it's paired with the report that Fudge is role swapping a mid lane, but we'll leave that topic for another time. What are Cloud9 getting with Summit? I've been peeking, lol, into his VODs and stats, and the picture they're painting is frankly pretty exciting. Let's start by getting an idea of the type of player Summit is, specifically by perusing his champion pool. In 2021, he had a clear number one pick in NAR, putting in 29 games in the champion and picking it blind 83% of the time. He was also happy to blind pick Renekton, Camille, or Viego. There's definitely some shared identity among these champions. For one thing, they're more or less variations on a bruiser theme. In lane, NAR and Renekton are both effective at controlling waves either aggressively or defensively, and all four picks do well as the second wave of an engage, either to add CC layering or to provide follow-up damage and target execution. When Summit was given the chance to pick after his lane opponent, which happened less for him than it did for most LCK top laners, he showed off more depth in his pool. Across the entire year, he picked 19 total champions, and 9 of them were only ever picked as response picks. This is where he brought out the occasional tank or assassin. So we're developing a picture of someone who prefers bruisers, but wasn't given many draft resources to express himself with. Now we can evaluate how he used that toolkit. I expect Summit to enter the LCS as the best laning top laner in the league. Statistically, he put up solid laning numbers in the LCK. Ranking ahead of Khan in GXD10 is very respectable, and there's no shame in having smaller numbers than some of the names above him, particularly Keen. But we've already looked at the context of his champion pool and the low draft resources he was given. And on top of that, his numbers were somewhat suppressed by the quality of help he was getting from his teammates. When you watch Summit's laning, you can see that he creates windows of priority very well, and most importantly, he uses them for good value on the map. He has strong recognition of his windows of potential vulnerability, too. He knows when to commit to a push or an all-in, but he also knows when to back off to safety or take a cautious reset based on the overall map state. Summit might not generate the same huge golden experience leads we saw from Alfari in 2021, partly because we shouldn't expect him to get quite the same amount of investment from his jungler and support. But I believe he's a more well-rounded laner overall, and it'll be really difficult for other teams to attack him efficiently, at least once Cloud9 get their communication flowing well. Finally, we come to Summit's team fighting. We've already seen that his champion pool set him up for being the second man in for team fights, and in my VOD review that's exactly what stood out to me. Summit generally does a good job of being ready to join a fight at the right time, whether it's to last hit key targets with Camille or layer in an R ultimate. And he has a knack for salvaging his own low health bar, and knowing when to exit and re-enter the action. Those characteristics helped Summit post some impressive numbers in terms of converting gold into damage. He formed a tight cluster with Keen and Doran, receiving the fourth highest share of his team's post 15 minute farm, and turning it into the second highest damage share of any top laner with at least 10 regular season games played. From his laning to his team fighting to his side laning as well, Summit is the complete package, and probably the best LCK player to come to the LCS since Someday or Core JJ. If he can make the transition effectively, Cloud9 fans should be very excited about what he's going to bring to the table. Holiday season is almost here, which means that there's great shopping opportunities over at Alienware. That's right, they've got their new R13 and R14s that are out, and guess what? I just want to ask you that whenever Black Friday comes up, or Cyber Monday, or uh, Deals Tuesday, or awesome awesome wednesday uh whatever i don't know uh that you check out alienware.com slash travis and then uh, click over on the banner up the top to head to their their black friday deal their holiday deals because like maybe you're going to purchase something and this would be a great way for you to support the channel is to purchase something and then you like tweet at them and let them know you did it because of me and then i feel good about myself and uh i can finally tell my family that they can be proud 